That's my dad posing with one that I won. Uh, I've won a lot of these in. There's my dad. He did win that one, to his credit. Um, uh, right? And, and this was just a big part of my life and my family's life. But, you know, I can hear the cynics. You know, in this age of digitally manipulated things, maybe those bears really aren't in the picture with me. <laughs> or maybe I paid somebody five bucks to take a picture in the theme park next to the bear. And I said, how in this age of cynicism can I convince people? And I said, I know. I can show them the bears. Bring them out. <laughs> You can just put him right there. You can just put him back against the wall. Doesn't he? I don't like it. It's hard to hear you. Okay. Thanks, honey. <laughs> uh, so uh, here's some here's some bears. Uh, we didn't have quite enough room in the moving truck down to Chesapeake, and uh, you know anybody who'd like a little piece of me uh, at the end of this, uh, feel free to come up. First come, first serve. All right, my next one, being an Imagineer. This was the hard one. Uh, believe me, getting to zero gravity is easier than becoming an Imagineer. Uh, when I was a kid, I was eight years old, and our family took a trip cross country to see Disneyland. And if you've ever seen the movie National Lampoon's Vacation, it was a lot like that. <laughs> it was a quest. And uh, these are real vintage photographs. Uh, and there I am in front of the castle, and there I am. And for those of you who are into foreshadowing, this is the Alice ride. <laughs> and, and I just thought this was just the coolest, coolest environment I'd ever been in. And instead of saying, gee, I want to experience this, I said, I want to make stuff like this. And so I, I bided my time, and then I graduated with my PhD from Carnegie Mellon, thinking that meant me infinitely qualified to do anything. And I dashed off my letters of application to Walt Disney Imagineering, and they sent me some of the damn nicest go-to-hell letters I've ever gotten. Uh, I mean, it was just, uh, we have carefully reviewed your application, and presently we do not have any positions available which require your particular qualifications. Now think about the fact that you're getting this from a place that's famous for guys who sweep the street, right? <laughs> so that was a bit of a setback. But remember, the brick walls are there for a reason, right? The brick walls are not there to keep us out. The brick walls are there to give us a chance to show how badly we want something. Because the brick walls are there to stop the people who don't want it badly enough. They're there to stop the other people. All right, fast forward to 1991. We did a system back at the University of Virginia called Virtual Reality on $5 a day. Uh, just one of those unbelievable, spectacular things. I was so scared back in those days as a junior academic. Uh, Jim Foley's here, and I just love to tell this story. Uh, he knew my undergraduate advisor, uh, Andy Van Dam, and I'm at my first conference, and I'm just scared to death. And this, this icon in the user interface community walks up to me and just out of nowhere just gives me this huge bear hug, and he says, that was from Andy. And that was when I thought, OK, maybe I can make it. All right? you know, maybe, maybe I do belong. Uh, and a similar story is that this was just this unbelievable hit, because at the time, everybody needed a half a million dollars to do virtual reality. And everybody felt frustrated. And we literally hacked together a system for about $5,000 in parts and made a working VR system. And people were just like, oh my god, it's like you know, the Hewlett Packard garage thing. This is so awesome. And so I'm giving this talk, and the room has just gone wild. And during the Q&A, a guy named Tom Furness, who was one of the big names in virtual reality at the time, he goes up to the microphone and he introduces himself. And I didn't know what he looked like, but I sure as hell knew the name. And he, and he asked a question. And I was like, I'm sorry, did you say you're Tom Furness? <laughs> he said, yes. I said, then I would love to answer your question. But first, will you have lunch with me tomorrow? <laughs> And, and there's a lot in that little moment, right? There's a lot of humility, but also asking a person where he can't possibly say no. <laughs> uh, and so Imagineering, a couple of years later, was working on a virtual reality project. This was top secret. They were denying the existence of a virtual reality attraction after the time that the publicity department was running the TV commercials. Okay, so Imagineering really had nailed this one tight. And uh, it was the Aladdin attraction where you would fly a magic carpet. 
and the head-mounted display, sometimes known as Gator Vision. Uh, and so I had an in. As soon as the, the, the project had just, you know, they started running the TV commercials. And I had been asked to brief the Secretary of Defense on the state of virtual reality. Okay, Fred Brooks and I uh, had been asked to brief the Secretary of Defense. And uh, that gave me an excuse. So I, I called them up, I called Imagineering, and I said, look, I'm briefing the Secretary of Defense. I'd like some materials on what you have because it's one of the best VR systems in the world. And they kind of pushed back and I said, look, is all this patriotism stuff in the parks a farce? And they're like, hmm, okay. Uh, <laughs> they said, but the, but the PR department doesn't, ha this is so new, the PR department doesn't have any footage for you, so I'm gonna have to connect you straight through to the team who did the work. Jackpot. Right? <laughs> so I find myself on the phone with a guy named John Snotty, who is one of the most impressive guys I have ever met. And he was the guy running this team, and it's not surprising they had done impressive things. And uh, so he sent me some stuff, we talked briefly, he sent me some stuff, and I said, hey, I'm gonna be out in the area for a conference shortly, would you like to get together and have lunch? <laughs> Translation, I'm going to lie to you and say that I have an excuse to be in the area so I don't look too anxious, but I would go to Neptune to have lunch with you. <laughs> uh, and so John said, sure. And uh, I spent something like 80 hours talking with all the VR experts in the world, saying if you had access to this one unbelievable project, what would you ask? And then I compiled all of that and I had to memorize it, which anybody who knows me knows that I have no memory at all, because I couldn't go in looking like a dweeb with, you know, hi, question 72, right? <laughs> so I went in and this was like a two hour lunch and John must have thought he was talking to, you know, some phenomenal person because all I was, do was doing was channeling Fred Brooks and Ivan Sutherland and Andy Van Dam and people like that and Henry Fuchs. So it's pretty easy to be smart when you're parroting smart people. Uh, and at the end of the lunch with John, I sort of, as we say in the business, made the ask. And I said, you know, I have a sabbatical coming up. And he said, what's that? <laughs> the beginnings of the culture clash. Uh, and so I talked to him about the possibility of coming there and working with him. And uh, he, uh, he said, well, that's really good, except, you know, you're in the business of telling people stuff and we're in the business of keeping secrets, right? And then what made John Snotty John Snotty was he said, but we'll work it out, right? Which I really love. The other thing that I learned from John Snotty, I could do a, easily an hour long talk just on what have I learned from John Snotty. One of the things he told me was that wait long enough and people will surprise and impress you. He said, when you're pissed off at somebody and you're angry at them, you just haven't given them enough time. Just give them a little more time and they'll almost always impress you. And that really stuck with me. I think he's absolutely right on that one. Uh, so uh, to make a long story short, we negotiated uh, a legal contract. It was going to be the first, some people refer to it as the first and last paper ever published by Imagineering. But the deal was I go, I, I provide my own funding, I go for six months, I work with a project, we publish a paper. Um, and then we meet our villain. <laughs> I can't be all sweetness and light because I have no credibility. Somebody's head's gonna go on a stick. Turns out that the person who gets his head on the stick is a